I'm Liz Spencer and welcome to Business Connection, introducing you to the names and faces of Naperville area entrepreneurs and business owners. Today we welcome in KLA Schools of Naperville as well as Busey Bank, but stay tuned for Connick and Associates, all here on Business Connection. You're watching Business Connection. Joining me now is Dr. Lisa Connick. Dr. Lisa, welcome to the show. Thank you, Liz. Tell me a little bit about Connick & Associates and what makes you unique. Well, we are a family behavioral health and psychological evaluations center. So we offer both therapy and counseling services for individuals and families, as well as psychological and neuropsychological evaluations in our center for testing all under one roof. To explain both services a little bit in case we don't, we are very familiar with the therapist, but we're not familiar with the other side of it. Well, therapy can involve a lot of things. So our, our service model is looking at um, individual counseling, family counseling, couples counseling and, and therapies. And what makes our approach a little different from other practices is when we see parents, when we see children, we're really integrating that care. So parents are involved in the care of their kids. And so we're teaching the parents the same skills that we're teaching the children when we're doing family therapy. Well, um, so they can transfer that skill at home and really work on those skills in the home setting. How do you determine which you need? Do you, do you often start with somebody maybe in therapy and suggest the psychological or do they come in with psych psychological and go to therapy? It can actually happen both ways. So a lot of times people will come in for a formal evaluation and we do a full evaluation um, and we make a diagnosis and a lot of times those recommendations are going to be for therapeutic um, supports, so in individual or family therapy, parent support, and then we can cross-refer into our team of therapists. Mm -hmm. Similarly, a lot of times our therapists may be working with a client and they realize they need some more information. There's some underlying concerns that they really feel need to be further evaluated. So we can then make that referral internally to our testing center. That's awesome that it's all under one roof. Yes. So because I would Im imagine that if you're in, in the therapy and, and want to do some further testing, it's a comfort to be able to do it within, within the scope of your practice. Yes. That's awesome. So tell me a little bit about your organizational structure and, and how does that fit into your care model? Well, our organizational model is based on providing high quality care with a high degree of integrity. So all of our clinicians are align with that model. Another aspect of our care model is empirically validated or research-based methods. And we integrate research-based methods that are um, grounded in solid research into our therapeutic approach as well as our testing. Wow, you're doing a lot. <laughs> what might a client expect from a therapist when they come to an office? You know, it's a, sometimes it's a first step for somebody. What should they expect? Well, when I make a, a request for services, we recognize a lot of people find that to be quite intimidating, mm -hmm. uh, depending on whether they've had therapy in the past or not, and also whether they may not have had a good experience. Right. So clinician, our clients can contact our, our client care coordinator, obviously by calling on the phone, but we also offer uh, an opportunity for them to reach out through our website. So they can email our client care coordinator, and everything is pretty seamless. Um, we do everything electronically, so it's paperless, and it's an easy, we try to make it as easy and uh, accessible for them as possible. And when they are seeking out a clinician at our practice, we have a, a wide variety of specializations. Mm -hmm. So what we're, our goal is to really find a good fit between what the client's needs are and having that therapist meet that area of specialty. So they're really kind of, we're trying to hand select that connection so that they're really being fit with somebody that's going to be able to work well with them and meet their needs. So does this um, client care coordinator um, take my, like if I'm calling and do I get that and then I say, okay, I want to talk to someone because I'm stressed out and then they, they recommend maybe two or three clinicians that have specialty in that and then then what, then what happens? Do I get to see who they are or explain this a little bit more to me? Sure. So all of our, um, you'll see, to speak about our clinical team, um, all of our clinicians are trained in research-based approaches. So they can mm -hmm. do cognitive, cognitive behavioral therapy and other 
approaches that are founded in the research, but they also bring a unique area of specialty mm -hmm. to the practice. So their specialties are listed on our website, so clients can go and, and look at each of our clinicians' bio, you know, biography page nice. and get a good understanding of what their unique areas and talents are. And that, I think, gives people a personalized experience Absolutely. where they feel like this person and their pictures there so they can see what they look like and it, and it really helps to make people feel a little more comfortable coming into the practice. Absolutely because it's a big step to you know to say I, I need to talk to someone or even if you've talked to someone in the past to switch a counselor is also a little bit traumatic. It is. So you're you're dealing with that. What when someone is seeking help with a therapist what um, advice or how long should someone expect to be with you? Well, I think it depends. Uh, we offer, you know, some therapies are shorter term, depending on the presenting problem, um, and some are longer term. And a lot of times what we'll see is, you know, we'll have somebody come in, stress management, anxiety, mm -hmm. mood-related issues. Um, we may see them and, and give them skills and work on those skills and have those, we want to make sure those skills are transferring to their real life, mm -hmm. so maybe helping their parents understand those skills. Um, making sure that they're getting those skills activated in the work environment. And once we're seeing that happen, we may start to do less frequent sessions. On the reverse, sometimes people are coming in and maybe it's a trauma-informed case. And they're really dealing with a lot and unloading a lot. And as they're in the process of therapy, maybe realizing they have more unpacking to do. Mm -hmm. um, so they may be in therapy longer. And, and so we really are able to meet both of those needs and really kind of take that journey with the client and, and kind of adjust their goals along the way. Right, well I think the one beautiful thing about therapy, no matter what you're in there for, is that the therapist is focused on you. This is a chance to really give yourself some time that you deserve to have to figure out your problems and or your your unpacking. I love that term mm -hmm. because we we tend to have a problem, stuff it in you know in our coat pocket and carry on, and then it gets too heavy. And that's yes. when we need someone like you or someone on your team. And we think about we're on the journey with you. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that's important to us is we are looking at establishing goals with that client in the very first intake session. And, and a lot of times people feel surprised. I say, what are your goals? And they're like, I, I don't know. And so we work with them on that. You're here for a purpose, mm -hmm. and we want to help you along the journey. And goals can evolve as we're going through that journey with them. Um, but we really want to make sure they're, they're getting the skills that they need to, unfortunately, no longer need us. Right, right. So when you think about today, are, are, is, are we more stressed out and in more need of services today than ever before? I think maybe we are. We're, we're seeing some interesting trends. Um, we're seeing a lot more younger individuals requesting a therapist from their parents. We're seeing children um, in that elementary age looking for therapy right now. We're seeing a lot of adolescents self-diagnosing online mm -hmm. um, and feeling like, hey, I need to see somebody to work through this. And we are able to serve both of those populations. Um, we're also seeing a lot of adults that have been carrying a lot of weight mm -hmm. um, with the stressors of life right now and um, coming in for, for support, as for parenting support, marital or couples related support, individual support. Um, so we are uh, able to offer all those services and support that whole range of, of individuals. I do feel like there is a um, normalizing of needing mental health care, of, of being able to seek out someone like you. And I think that's a wonderful a wonderful transition from what we have been. So thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you for stopping by and telling us a little bit about um, you and your specific practice. And we wish you a lot of luck and thank you for the care that you're giving us. Thank you, Liz. And if you're interested in learning more about Connick and Associates, please visit their website. We'll be right back with more Business Connection. Stay in the know, at home, or on the go with NCTV 17 News Update. This quick recap of everything happening in and around town will be delivered straight to your email inbox for free. Sign up today. Welcome to Business Connection. I'm Liz Spencer. We're on location today. I've packed a lunch and we're off to KLA Schools of Naperville.
This is a great space. What a wonderful school. Tell me a little bit about the Reggio Emilia approach. So the Reggio Emilia approach is actually a philosophy in early childhood education. It derived from Italy after World War II. And what happened was um, this city, they um, developed these schools. It was inspired by philosophers and other people in the community to build these great schools for the children. Um, and we, they have this high image of the child, believing that children um, are born with so much potential. They don't see them as those empty vessels. And during that time frame, believing that children have rights, so they um, kind of are like constructivists. They have that ability to develop their learning. Um, and it's so much more meaningful for the children. So here at our school, they could be outside and exploring the playground and see an insect or bug. And to them, you know, if we just have this strict regimented curriculum where you have to do this, but you know, when they have those questions and those curiosities, we're able to um, take that learning and investigate it and go deeper. Um, our teachers research with the children. So we might not be an expert on a specific topic or anything, but we learn with the children. Our parents are involved in that learning process. The environment is strong um, where it serves as a, as a teacher. Um, and then we believe that children learn through not, you know, differently. So we provide endless opportunities for them to learn. Um, so some of our program, we have unique um, enrichment programs and spaces in our class, in our school that allows them to investigate and learn. So how does KLA meet the social and emotional needs of their students? Sure, so the social emotional growth of the children is um, equally important to us as the cognitive development of the children. One of the most important ways that we support this in the children is by incorporating what's called mindfulness. Um, simple techniques for anyone of any age to approach stressful situations with open mindsets. Um, these are modeled by our teachers on a daily basis. We can teach the children how to read, how to write, how to know their letters, shapes, colors, all of those things to prepare them for the elementary school. But if they don't understand how to regulate their emotions or to even to understand that it's okay to be mad sometimes, it's okay to be sad, or to understand that others have feelings like that, um, then they won't be ready for the elementary school. So we do focus a lot on supporting their social emotional development just as much as we do with their cognitive development. Another way that we really support this for them is by incorporating what's called our core values. Um, so here at KLA, our discipline approach is really focusing on positive redirection, um, teaching the children these positive behaviors that are going to lay the foundation for their future. So flipping all of that discipline into a positive redirection, refraining from using that word no, um, and just really supporting helping laying that good foundation for the children to kind of strive on as they get older. Wonderful. So tell me a little bit about the enrichment programs here, because those sound great too. Yes, the enrichment programs are a variety that we offer to the children across all the ages. Um, one of our most unique ones that we do offer is our innovative computing and robotics program. This will start in our preschool or our class of the threes, and this is an introduction to what is the computer? What is that mouse? What is the hand-eye coordination that's required to manipulate the mouse? Um, rather than everything being touch screen for the children, we will introduce them to the basics of coding and and as they get older in the program, they'll be doing some basic web designing and robotics. Um, we also have a Spanish program that's incorporated throughout the week for all ages. Just a brief introduction to the language for the children. Um, we also have a martial arts instructor that will come in for our three and older students once a week. Um, and then we also have Miss Joan from Kinder Music who will come in. She does a, a music class for children of all ages um, every other week for them. And then lastly, we incorporate yoga throughout the week. There are endless benefits of introducing yoga at a young age. However, it is a great gross motor activity to do if, say, the weather is inclement or we can't go outside or it's really nice to use during transitions as well with the children. That's wonderful. All of that is so important to them. There are lots of um, choices for parents these days. What sets KLA apart? What sets KLA apart is our environment. And um, our environment, from the way it's designed, to how the teachers prepare it, it's, it promotes and makes the children feel like they're a part of it. Um, it promotes their curiosity. So we'll set out different things for them to explore. And for them, they're playing, but really we're expanding their knowledge. We're looking at those different areas of development. We have unique spaces. I, I know we had mentioned our, 
our enrichment programs, but we have um, a piazza. So that's a common area space for the children to explore, um, you know, where we have common interest. Um, we have our atelier, um, so where they can explore lights and shadows. Um, the other unique thing is um, with our program and our philosophy, we um, really involve our families in that process and we really take into account and we keep them open in the, with the communication. So um, we have our portal, um, which they're able to see what, you know, what's going on with, with their child. We'll share um, a, like, you know, like a daily journal, which will just capture one beautiful moment that's happening throughout the day. And, and those logistical things that you need to know about your child, like sleeping and napping. Um, but then it also shares, you know, like their learning process. We do conferences. And we also ask the parents insight like how, you know, you can be involved in this, you know, like this are things we're doing at home. We work together and share those goals together. Is that part of the parent partnership that you have or is that, is that key to it or is, is there more? That's one of the keys. We see parents as the first and most influential teacher. So what we do is when we are, when we ask for their support, when we're doing things to keep that consistency. So their support, like, what are you doing at home? Because children need that consistency. They have routines at home so we can help make them feel comfortable here. And not only that, um, so the parents can also continue what we're doing at the school at home. We have different committees at our school, so we'll plan different events. Um, but then we also have different initiatives, like um, how are we promoting literacy? What are we doing for STEM? Promoting fine arts. And so sometimes the parents will even um, come in and be a guest speaker. Um, they might join us on a field trip, or they know, might know somebody. We've had um, you know different people, extended family, come in and dance or show different things or bring in materials because real life experiences are so important and so connecting home to school is instrumental and that's gonna help the children succeed. The more the parents are involved, they will continue to succeed in our program, but later on as well. Right, you all are just really laying a very vital, vital um, uh, base for the child to continue to grow and thrive. And if anything, be a little bit ahead of everybody else. So I thank you for what you do. It's, it's you know, so vital for you know, everybody to continue to be successful. And we'll be right back with more Business Connection. We all have a story to share, stories others can relate to, whether moments of sorrow or of hope and inspiration, whether a story of struggle or a moment of victory. Every little moment captured and shared helps us to feel more informed helps us to feel more engaged with and connected to the community we all call home. Every little moment captured and shared adds up to something greater. For us, that something is the collective story of Naperville, a city rich in its volunteer spirit, its diversity, its traditions and celebrations, and so much more. In Naperville, there are so many stories worth sharing. And for the past 35 years, it's been our honor to tell those stories and share them with you. You're watching Business Connection. And joining me now from Busey Bank is Sean Gallagher. So, Sean, welcome to the show. Tell me a little bit about Busey. Thanks, Liz. Really appreciate uh, the opportunity to share with you today. Uh, Busey Bank, 155-year-old uh, institution based out of Champaign, Illinois, uh, just close to about $12.5 billion of assets, uh, focused uh, very much on uh, connecting with businesses, uh, business owners, uh, as well as our communities. That's awesome. Now, you came into the Naperville community about, what, 2017? That's correct, yes. Uh, Busey Bank uh, came to Chicago land in 2017 with the acquisition of a bank named uh, First Community Financial. Mm -hmm. uh, with that, uh, we now have two presences in uh, Naperville, one uh, 401 South Main Street, downtown Naperville, and the second on the intersection of Gardner and Washington. That's wonderful. But in the region, Naperville is just one of your, your cities, right? That's correct, yes. Um, as I noted, uh, acquisition back in 2017, uh, that brought 10 branches uh, within the Chicagoland area, 
primarily in the south and southwest suburbs of Chicago to the Busey Fold. And then last year, uh, acquisition of Glenview State Bank out of Glenview, Illinois, with presence in Northbrook as well as Mount Prospect. So added to the North Shore, uh, still very strong in the south suburbs, but uh, uh, future uh, unknown, but my assumption is continued expansion will occur. Well, I know we've appreciated having uh, Busey in the community. Um, you have a big footprint in that beautiful office in downtown Naperville. Yes, absolutely. It's uh, lucky, uh, you know, timing works out uh, mm -hmm. for you in some ways. And uh, that opportunity for uh, the Main Street office uh, was just tremendous. Could not pass it up. Right. Well, I put you, I, I think your timing has really been great because that was a, the Water Street development was right. coming in at that time, which really boosted the downtown area and put the bank in a prominent place. And then your your location down on Gartner, that is absolutely the center of Naperville. And so that little spot is very much a hub for you. And that um, plaza really is a hop in one too. So you were, it is. Uh, it's a win-win situation across the board. Yeah, the, the thing I'll tell you about Gartner too is uh, you always get some great tunes in there, uh -huh. uh, sharing a wall with uh, the Orange Theory next door. Uh, certainly, uh, you get some interesting music pumping through the walls, but uh, uh, fantastic locations. And uh, for us, uh, the associates that uh, we have in those locations as well, uh, just longtime uh, Naperville residents, uh, Lou Petritz, mm -hmm. Steve Wagey, Natasha Mariner, uh, some younger talent too, John Bramlett, Chris Sabino, uh, just tremendous people and associates we have working with our customers out of those locations. That's awesome. I think people don't understand the, the civic and corporate responsibility or role that a bank plays in the community. Why is that important? For Busey, it's all about culture. Uh, so over the 155 years, uh, the bank has really come to understand its role, um, A, as a great steward of an, over 1,500 associates throughout our footprint. Uh, that extends out to our customer base. And then uh, the third, uh, one of the third pillars that we have is our community. Uh, being a good steward uh, in the locations that we have, serving the people of those communities, as well as small businesses, not-for-profits, et cetera, uh, it's core to the Busey culture. And you're a full-service bank, correct? That's correct. So when, when somebody says that, what does that mean? So for Busey, it's always about a holistic approach. Um, I've been at banks in my career that uh, have always uh, led with their balance sheet, right? Uh, let's find loans to make uh, to small businesses, medium-sized businesses, uh, mortgage lending, et cetera. Uh, UC is a little bit different. Uh, we focus in on the people behind the businesses. So focus on the business owner, their families, uh, the employees of that business, more so than it is about what kind of lending can we provide or are there treasury management, wealth management, other opportunities with the business? It's all about the people involved and uh, it's a holistic approach. What's important to Liz running her business um, is that estate planning, is that tax planning, is that uh, generational conversations about how do I transition my business to my children or is now the right time for a sale event? Those are very large and complex conversations uh, but at the same time, uh, when you have that focus and you have that depth of understanding with that relationship, what comes easy is the opportunity to say, provide equipment le uh, oppor lending opportunities or mortgage, personal mortgage lending opportunities or helping them manage or set up a 401k plan. Um, knowing what it is that's important for that business owner as well as their employees helps drive conversations about the other products, services that Busey has to offer. I think people often just don't think of, about it, having a conversation with their banker right. beyond their checking and savings account or maybe their ATM card. Right. Of all those services that you offer that are right together with where you keep a majority of your money. That's correct. Absolutely. I find that fascinating because I enjoy NCTV is, is um, very happy to um, you know, be a part of Busey's community giving. You know, we thank mm -hmm. you for your, your continued support of us through Spotlight and, and other endeavors. Um, so we really appreciate that. Sure. And it just, it also just shows, you know, your commitment to community. So, and the not-for-profit world, because we know you are generous with other not-for-profits in this area. So we, again, thank yeah. you for that. Because it just keeps us all working together. So from the small business to the, the individual to that not-for-profit. Um, if someone's interested in, in, in finding out about Busey or getting a, um, starting with Busey or figuring out you know, if they're already a current client, client, what else they can do with Busey? Sure. How do they do that? 
Sure. Uh, easy ways, right? Uh, um, uh, internet uh, probably guides everything that we do right. today. Yeah. Uh, Busey.com slash Chicagoland uh, will take you to our landing page. A uh, great picture of our Naperville, uh, downtown Naperville branch and that Water Street uh, development. Uh, but obviously a lot of resources online. And then come into the branch. Uh, I know it's uh, that's starting to become less and less of a popular <laughs> idea, uh, actually physically visiting a branch. But uh, our location, downtown Naperville, uh, we have every business and product line represented there. Mm -hmm. And it's all managed by local Naperville residents. Uh, so whether it's commercial lending, wealth management, private client opportunities, retail, uh, consumer mortgage, et cetera, um, all of information for all of those products and um, uh, different uh, focuses of our relationship banking uh, are all, all can be found in that downtown location. That's awesome. So whether you want to talk in person or maybe you're more comfortable chatting online, sure. they can connect with Busey. So I think that's awesome. Sean, thanks for stopping by and sharing a little bit about what Busey does. And we so appreciate your role in the community. Excellent. Thanks, Liz. If you're interested in a television appearance on Business Connection as a way to reach out to your community or to gain exposure for your company, please visit our website to find out more. I'm Liz Spencer and thank you for watching Business Connection.